Ooh, it's Mrs. Simmons. I am here to give you a little lecture over the literary research essay. I have a feeling a lot of what I'm going to say isn't particularly new, but hopefully it will help you a little bit here for this summer assignment. So let's get started. Step one, you need to do the actual assignment. You need to research and read so that you can start building a potential focus and thesis statement for your essay. So this is based on the summer assignment document, so please revisit part one of that assignment. As you watch the documentary, as you gather those academic articles and answer those guiding questions, it should help you find a general direction that you'd like to go for your actual paper. I also want to stress that you need to cite any sources that you think you might use in your research uh, and in your essay. Also, I want to remind you that the actual prompt for the essay is to explore how the Anglo-Saxon and Christian ideals that you researched up here show up in Beowulf. So as you finish up your research, begin to read and annotate your text of Beowulf for those elements. You want to see what shows up in the poem itself. So that's step one. Step two. After researching and reading, you are going to start building a thesis statement. It's the most important thing that we do for essays. So I want to stress that it should be strong, it should be specific, and it should limit what you're writing about and give you a focus. So something that might be too broad and weak just doesn't give anything specific. So if I said Beowulf has many examples of the Anglo-Saxon ideals in Christianity, uh-huh, yeah, okay, what are those ideals? What's the point of Christianity in Beowulf? There, there's, there's no real argumentation of this. And, and a thesis statement does essentially create some kind of argument that has to be proven with your evidence. So something that is better that you don't necessarily need to model off of, but that you should look at is, the poet behind Beowulf made a point to maintain the old world with the changing new world, manhood and war, competing with Christianity and peace. Now this gives my paper a really interesting focus. I'm going to focus on the old world of Anglo-Saxon manhood and war and really trying to be someone special that people will remember versus Christianity, trying to work together, and um, peace. There is a really interesting juxtaposition in this poem about that, so maybe that's a, a direction that you could go. And there are many other directions you could go as well, but it needs to be specific, something interesting, something that will get you to the the page requirement. I also want to stress that if a thesis statement is like the better one that I wrote here, you should not deviate from that. Don't go in and talk about something that has nothing to do with manhood, war, Christianity, peace, old world, and changing new world. Focus on that thesis statement and support that thesis statement throughout. Don't deviate. Step three, start planning for your organization. And once you have your thesis statement written, then you're going to focus on your paragraph structuring and your organization of your ideas. I just want to really quickly go over basic paragraph structuring. It's the same thing I've taught for the last two years. You always need to have a topic sentence. This is the thesis for that paragraph, your focus for that paragraph. Claims if you need them. Remember, claims kind of work as transitional sentences between your chunks. So then you need your chunks. You'll probably need three to four chunks depending on what you need. And remember, a chunk contains the evidence, and your evidence has lead-ins and citations. And then analysis for each piece of evidence that makes those connections and or explains your reasoning, whatever point you're trying to make. And then repeat those chunks as necessary, again, maybe three to four. And then you'll end your paragraph with a concluding transition sentence. So use this basic paragraph structure to be successful. Now for the overall essay structure, I have two options here. Um, I think they're probably, both of them can be good. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. So let's focus on option one first. So as always, you'll have your introduction, which will contain your thesis statement towards the end. And then in this one, I had us go to the first body paragraph. And that body paragraph is only going to focus on the historical context or your research that has a direct correlation to your thesis and it will be the baseline on how it shows up in Beowulf. Beowulf, yeah. So again, first body paragraph is really only historical context. And then your second body paragraph would begin connecting your historical context to the epic poem itself. So these are the things that I know about Anglo-Saxon life, Christianity in that time. Here's how it shows up in the poem. And then you would rep repeat that process through your third body paragraph, just maybe with a different focus, a different element that you're looking at. And if you need a fourth body paragraph, then it's the same concept. And then, of course, you would conclude your essay. Option two takes the concept of option one and spreads it out. 
So again, introduction with your thesis statement towards the end. And then your first potty body paragraph <laughs> will combine research with the poem. So you would find one or two elements that you want to explore in this paragraph and not only present the research, but also present how it shows up in the poem. And then you would repeat that. It would be the same general pattern and structure through all the body paragraphs. It's just that you would have a different focus, a different element or elements in each paragraph. So if you need a third body paragraph, great. If you need a fourth body paragraph, great. And then of course you would conclude again. So those are your two options for the full essay structure. Step four, well, now you write your rough draft. And I want you to do what works for you. If you're somebody who likes to skip the introduction and conclusion and come back to it after you've written body paragraphs, please do so. I'm glad that works for you. Please do it. However, I want to stress that you should not be doing body paragraphs without a thesis. It's really important to have that thesis statement for your focus. Now, the thesis statement can change as necessary, but you still want to build on that focus and not deviate from it. I also want to stress that you shouldn't worry too much about grammar, having perfect transitions or perfect analysis or perfect organization. This can be cleaned up and, and added later. We, you don't have to worry about it right now. Just get your ideas out. Just kind of bleh, get it out there for the rough draft. Step five, this is when you actually edit and revise. So four major things to really be looking at. Look at grammar. Look at strong word choice, look at organization, and look at your citations, okay? So grammar, look at your syntax, that's sentence structure, and make sure that you're using proper conventions, pr correct punctuation. Use that editing corrections manual that I've given you, look at your notes, um, make sure that you're leading in correctly to your evidence, so giving context and using correct punctuation. Again, lead-in information is in the editing corrections manual under LI for lead-in. Look at your strong word choice, guys. I've taught you so many vocabulary words that you can probably use in this essay. I highly suggest that you do that. Not only will it, it get you a little extra credit, but it will elevate your word choice. And that is so important. That's something I just learned in my AP training was good vocabulary. Okay. Additionally, look at your organization. Really take a hard look at that flow. Does it make sense? Does it build on itself? Are you lacking analysis? Do you need to more fully flesh out your ideas? If so, build your analysis. Dive more deeply into Beowulf and the significance of, of what it does as a view, a lens into the Anglo-Saxon culture. Do you need more evidence? Then you better get more evidence, okay? And don't be afraid to rearrange those paragraphs or chunks if it's not working for you. Make it be organized, make it make sense, and work together. And finally, your citations. You have to cite everything that comes from research or the poem. If you didn't concoct that connection or that idea, you would better cite it because otherwise that is plagiarized. You have stolen that idea and it's a very serious academic mistake. And remember, when you're citing, you have to have two things. It must be in text and it must be on the work cited and it should be very clearly matched and I should be able to identify where that information comes from. Finally, you can use MLA 7 or 8. I don't care which one, just make sure that you're consistent. Do it all in MLA 7 or all in MLA 8. Right now I know MLA 7 best. I will be learning 8 next month, but that's something to consider. Final step, write that final draft. Again, I'm going to stress that you read your paper out loud. Too often our brains are really good at filling in the gaps because you know what you meant. But when you read it out loud, it really forces you to hear your errors for example, before I recorded this, I went through every single slide and read every single bullet to make sure that it made sense. Hopefully I did a good job of that. <laughs> I also need you to double, triple, and quadruple check your citations in order to avoid plagiarism. We've gone over research papers twice now. We've done multiple research projects. You guys should know how to do this correctly. And I also just want to add in a warning. Do not cheat. I will catch you and you will begin very poorly. I would rather you put this off until the night before and turn in an essay that is not up to snuff than turn in something that you copy and pasted or pulled off of an essay page. So please make good choices on this. Now, once you have finished with the final draft, you need to print it and have it ready the first day of school or 
You can email it to me as a PDF or Word document by 7 p.m. the night before school begins in August. And there's my email at the bottom. Okay. I want to stress again as a PDF or Word document, not as a link if you're using Google Docs. Okay. It just doesn't work out well. Please don't do it. Finally, I hope that you get this done quickly and easily so that you can say, you did a thing. Congratulations. Good luck, guys. See you in August.